Mm -hmm. Hi, Michelle. How are you? Hello, Isabella. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. No, you're welcome. It's been an absolute pleasure. Now, for the people at home, if they're watching now or on replay, mm -hmm. um, back in January, I asked you to be part of the Vegan Plant Based Summit. Mm -hmm. And you agreed, and I explained to you that you're one of my favorite plant based YouTubers. And you <laughs> agreed even more. <laughs> COVID got in the way, and eventually, I think it was April, May, we actually started the, the summit, and I interviewed you, and it was a great talk, and it was all centered around being a plant-based mother right mm -hmm. from the beginning so pregnancy breastfeeding and then raising children and there was some absolute stonkers in there <laughs> great information that i hope the viewers at home when they watch the summit will be really appreciative of the information um but as i said i'm one of your biggest fans and <laughs> the other day i was watching a q a that you've done on binge eating mm -hmm. and i know that well, I don't know, really. I just can speak from experience. But a lot of people suffer from binge eating from mm -hmm. one reason or another. Um, tell us a little bit about, as a plant-based, vegan plant-based health coach, your experience with your clients. Absolutely. So I think that pretty much all of us have some form of disordered eating. It's just where do you fall on the spectrum? Maybe it's a very you know, low case of it where you overeat occasionally and you just get on with your life. But uh, maybe it's not. Maybe it's more serious than that. And I, I work with primarily women. And I would say at least 95% of the women that I work with, at least 95% have some um, problem with binge eating. And, you know, you can be eating a healthy, whole food, plant-based diet all of the time, but it's those moments of either getting caught up in a binge or um, just those extracurricular eating activities that you're doing that are really sabotaging your long-term results. And I think when it comes to binge eating that you have to really step outside of, of, of your patterns that you've gotten yourself into and just with love and with curiosity question, why has my eating gotten to this point? And I think that one of the biggest takeaways um, in the live that you watched the other day uh, that I was talking about this is um, we all get that kind of urge to begin uh, the cycle of binging. And the urge is nothing more than a thought or um, some kind of emotion-fueled idea that, hmm, I, I think I want to do this. And then it's that urge that starts snowballing into the, okay, well, here's what I'm going to eat when I go on this binge. And this is what I need to get at the grocery store to make these cakes and these cookies or I'm going to wait until everybody's sleeping so nobody knows that I'm doing this. All of these kind of um, behaviors that oftentimes happen alone, <laughs> you know, uh, these are the things that really sabotage you and, and you can be going a couple steps forward and, and then these moments that can be within a short period of time, five to ten minutes up to maybe an hour of of a binging out of your week that are really throwing you off. Um, and so my biggest tip is that the urge or that thought that's telling you to do this does not equate uh, having to have to have that binge. So urge does not equal binge. It only suggests a binge. Um, it's like this little angel and devil on your shoulder, right? And, and the little angel is telling you, hey, you want to eat healthy because you want to live long and you want to be there for your family and you want to have the energy that you need to be able to sustain the life and you want to fuel your body with uh, clean, whole food, plant-based foods that are going to give you the energy for optimal health. And then there's this other little devil over here saying, yeah, but one binge won't hurt. Um, this will be fun. No one's going to notice. It's just you and the food. And and it's real hard sometimes when we kind of need to take um, an outside look and, and see where where's that thought that's actually lying to me? Because I don't know about you, but for any time I've had a binge, it never ends well. I always feel either some kind of disgust or shame or like, oh, why did I do that again? Or, um, you know, you bloated or you ate way too close to eating or sleeping and now your sleep is disrupted. You wake up in the morning, you just feel like junk. And um, so that that little urge voice that's telling you that the binge one time won't hurt just this last time. It'll be the last time you can start again on Monday. 
those are all lies. <laughs> and it's really a matter of um, sitting with that urge and, and just letting it be. It's like a voice or like a, a, a kid who's throwing a tantrum um, in, in the grocery store and he really wants that toy or whatever it is. And every time you go into the grocery store, you can't buy a toy. Uh, so you, you have to just sit with the yelling and the crying and you have to be the weird mom with the kid that's screaming in the store that everybody's like, get your child under control. But you let it be. And, and that, that voice telling you to binge does eventually dissipate. It might take 10 minutes. It might take an hour. It might take a couple of days. But as you begin to let that voice grow softer and softer, it eventually will go away. But I'm not saying it's easy. It's definitely a process. But I do believe that you know, really taking a stock of, of, of listening to yourself and not just automatically going down the same patterns that you've always gone down. It takes a lot of self-discipline and control, but as you do it, then, then the, the thinking part of your brain, the brain that's connected to your real results that you want long-term starts to take over and, and you're able to overcome it. So in short, that's what I, my, my thoughts on binging. But if you're struggling with binging, you're not alone. You're really not alone. So many people deal with this and it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's just something to begin to look at with love for yourself and your, your, you know, weight loss goals, your health goals. Um, and with curiosity and be like, why am I reaching for food when I'm actually bored? Or why am I reaching for this false reward that I think is going to come from food? But it actually is going to come from me taking care of myself, uh, going to sleep early, turning off the phone, all of those other things that fall under the blanket of, of a holistic, optimal health, which everybody wants. Um, food only does one thing, and that's feed you or fuel you. It, it can't take any other worries away or, or, or solve any other problems. So long-winded answer, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's a good answer. So for me... Um, it normally happens when I've been to the gym and I've, well, my, not me, because I'd never push myself that far, but my trainer has over pushed me. And, you know, mm -hmm. when they say one more, one more, and it's like a hundred more. Oh. Um, and I normally, the devil on my shoulder says, wicked kitchen cupcakes. Because, <laughs> and, no, kale. Mm -hmm. And then the says, hey, hey, stop arguing. You know that if you go with the cupcakes, you're going to have to do two more sessions to get, to get rid of it. And if you go mm -hmm. with Oh, you're fine yeah it's true but then the cravings set in mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. the salt or sugar and you know you were talking on your q a about the cravings give us a little bit more about that information yeah absolutely so i think i, I think that's a, a totally identifiable place for for so many people to be in and you know you do i'd say what i what i tell my clients is 90 to 95 percent of the food that you put in your mouth is you want to think about that as fueling your body. So those are the fruits, the vegetables, the starchy vegetables, the non-starchy vegetables, grains, legumes, a little bit of um, a little bit of whole plant fats, and that is what fuels your body. The other five to ten percent of your daily, not daily intake, but your overall calorie count can come from things that maybe are not one hundred percent pure and whole. Like if you're coming to that point where you're like, I want a cupcake. God, I want a cupcake. I really want a cupcake. And all you're thinking about is a cupcake. Then my suggestion is plan it 24 hours in advance. Think about how you're going to, you know, what kind of cupcake you're going to have. If you're going to go pop into the vegan cupcake place, you know exactly the one you're going to have. You're going to pay for it. You're going to have that one cupcake, not a dozen of them. Uh, you're going to put your phone down. You're going to enjoy every single bite. You're going to think about how is this bite making me feel? You're going to enjoy it. You're going to be in the moment. And when you're done with the cupcake, you're done. You move on with your life. You go back to the next meal eating well. It's not a cycle of punishment and reward uh, with food. It is, okay, I really wanted to have that cupcake. It was delicious. I feel a little sick because I've been eating so healthy. Um, and it's over. And, and now I'm done. And the next time, that was probably a learning experience. The next time, you know what, maybe I don't want that cupcake because I actually didn't feel so great after eating it. And the more you kind of build... Um, positive thoughts and positive momentum around around food food cravings and then the better it's going to be long term and then also just having maybe three to five things in your arsenal that are healthy 
um, that you can go to if the sweet craving is coming. So say you're craving cakes or brownies or whatever your thing is. Um, maybe you have a, a, a nice cream recipe that you really love that really satisfies that craving, like a chai, uh, cacao and banana chocolate ice cream, nice cream. Maybe you have a shake or maybe you have a certain bowl of oats that is sweet. It, it just kind of it takes that edge off and you're like, okay, that was really good. I don't feel sick now. I'm not disgusted with myself. I'm not off my plan and I can move on with my life. But every once in a while, when you do have to, you know, when you really, really want that thing, have it, see what it's like. I personally always keep it vegan, um, but there's plenty of vegan junk food out there. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So that's what I would do. You know, have your arsenal filled with three to five recipes, salty or sweet or whatever your thing is that you can go to when you're feeling like you want to have something a bit naughty. And then beyond that, if you have a birthday coming up and you know you want to have a piece of cake, have a piece of cake. Don't eat the whole cake. Have the piece. <laughs> Enjoy the piece and be done. <laughs> one piece. For mm -hmm. me, my go-to is juice normally. Mm -hmm. If I'm really naughty, it's a smoothie. Mm -hmm. I can drink twice as much of that. Um, mm -hmm. But juices, I, I don't like beetroot. I don't like carrots. I like them as physical things, but in the juice, no. Not like in, uh -huh. But they're really good for you. Mm -hmm. So I try to mix them with things like pineapple. And as I say, if I have a smoothie, I'll chuck some chia seeds in there as well. And I end up like a cake rather than a juice. Or yeah. A um, but there's lots of things you can actually stick together to fend off this sugar and the salt cravings. And mm -hmm. one of I love on your YouTube channel is your purple green juice thing. Um, purple green juice thing. Tell me what I, I make so many recipes. I'm not, I don't remember it. It's a green juice, but it's actually purple. Okay. So put some berries in there. It's a while since I watched it, but it, it was, I was like, oh yeah, I can do that. Oh, good. And through those recipes, I think, yeah, I can do that. Mm -hmm. And I think what makes your recipes, um, really good is the fact that anybody can do them at any time it, they're, they're simple they're not they're not like four thousand ingredients and six machines and you then you get that much in the bottom um they're yeah. really easy and they're good to follow and they're good for families too not just people wanting to lose weight or people that want to do detox mm -hmm. what's your favorite recipe that um you would actually keeping on keeping on track with the family side of things would you suggest that if you're having a bit of a sugar binge what juice would you suggest okay well first i just want to say thank you that's really sweet of you to say um that's definitely my aim to keep the recipes very simple simple and doable for anybody whether you're brand new or you've been plant-based for years and years and years um for me okay i can say right now my son is going through he used to love green smoothies and all of a sudden one day he just didn't so what we've been doing lately he he always asks for ice cream he's never had actual ice cream so to him ice cream is banana and ice cream in the in the blender and so i haven't been able to have him eat any greens lately so we've been having chocolate ice cream for breakfast i'm putting uh, spinach in there i'm putting a little bit of cacao um, about a tablespoon of nut butter because for the kids they can have a little bit more fat than than me anyways <laughs> i put some some uh, seeds in there like either a flax seed or a chia seed or hemp seed and um, three or four frozen bananas. I blend it up and I feel no guilt feeding my son chocolate ice cream. And also I know he's had some spinach in there as well. So at least he got, you know, a, a couple of servings of greens in there. But um, just on an everyday basis, both my kids love rice or beans or quinoa. Um, I throw really tiny chopped vegetables in there, almost imperceptible, they enjoy it. Um, and regarding sweets, what else? Muffins. Muffins are a great thing to make or banana bread, things you can just throw a zucchini bread, you know, grate up an entire zucchini, throw it in, in the batter and you've got a really great, uh, treat for kids as well. Um, yeah, keeping it simple, but something that seems palatable to them, but also you can just also throw in some extra nutrient boosters, like some greens or some, some nuts or seeds or, or things like that. Lots of fruit. <laughs> so it's making it look like junk food, but it's <laughs> healthy. That's the trick. Kind of, kind of, yeah. 
<laughs> my children, my eldest two children were younger. I used to hide their vegetables in their potatoes because they like potatoes. So they oh. carving them out, showing them in. And um, yeah. I never knew. They just eat them. Uh, but I think there is an age that children get to and it's like all of a sudden, I'm not eating that. Mm -hmm. I'm not eating it. It's green. Yeah. It's orange or pink. It's just, I don't know what it is. It's like a switch. Um, it, it really is. But you know what's funny is, um, you know, my children have been raised with with whole food, plant based. We don't eat junk in our house, and and uh, my son just started school, and um, they had these popsicles. And when when I make popsicles, it's it's a uh, you know homemade. It's from fruit. It's from either a fruit juice or a coconut milk or something like that. And we went to the thing, and I thought, okay, it's not an animal product. I'll let him try the the popsicle. He tried it, and he was like. He didn't like it. He really didn't like it. So even though I want him to eat healthier, already at a young age, no matter what you're doing as the parent, you're establishing their eating preferences. So just keep offering, keep offering the good foods to them and keep switching up the way that you're, you're offering them. And, and, and one way will take and, you know, kids, they uh, one day, nothing next day, everything. So <laughs> What about things like chicken nuggets? I mean, kids love them, don't they? And obviously, vegan style, we've got chicken nuggets, non-chicken nuggets. Um, and then they're not too healthy. I mean, people put them in as a substitute so the children don't know any better. Um, but you can't beat a couple of beans. You can make falafels and interesting things. What do you actually give to your kids to stop that? Hey, I want chicken nuggets. Well, they, def they don't know what chicken nuggets are, so I'm, I'm really lucky in that category. <laughs> Um, what do I, I'm trying to just think of staples. I, in the air fryer, I'll make, um, oil free French fries and those have a nice crisp to them. And so, um, both my kids love those. Uh, what is, I'm trying to think of like, what's fun. I mean, the staples for them are, are oatmeal smoothies, um, the nice creams, rice and beans, maybe a whole grain pasta, uh, blended up with some kind of sauce and, and fruit, lots and lots of fruit. Fruit is a, a treat. I know like to somebody who's just starting out in plant-based, you're thinking, oh, come on, your kids don't eat junk. And they, they don't, and I'm really happy about that. But that doesn't mean that they won't encounter, you know, that kind of stuff in the future. I think I'm actually working, gonna begin working on a kid-centered uh, cookbook next. So um, I'll let you know when I have those ideas ready. But uh, off the top of my head, I'm not sure you could do, um, like a lightly breaded zucchini in the air fryer, make little um, crunchy zucchini coins. That That's something that my son has liked before, but not something I make all the time. Um, or even um, some kind of uh, whole toast with maybe, I don't know, a, a cheese spread or something to mimic a macaroni, or not a macaroni and cheese, but like a grilled cheese sandwich or and then there's macaroni and cheese that you can make with, with veggies in there, like potatoes and carrots, onions, and some nutritional yeast and a little bit of cashews. That also mimics one of those typical junk food foods. So, yeah. I don't use cashews because I'm not that fond of them. I use butternut squash instead. Which oh, nice. Nutritional yeast, you just can't tell any difference. And I don't know whether you have it in America, but we've got a brand in the UK called Wicked Kitchen. And I've heard of that, but no, we don't have it. Oh, it's amazing. They've just started doing flavored nutritional yeasts. Oh, so you cool. can have garlic and herb, you can have barbecue, you can have chipotle. It's just like makes so good. taste so much better. Not that oh, it's nice. so good anyway, obviously. Mm -hmm. it's the best. Um, so just to round up, shall we do a Q&A, fun Q&A? Yeah. Rather than a, you know, all in, let's get serious. Let's do a Yeah. Okay. Okay. So juicing good or bad oh i think it's good i know there's a lot of um you know there's there's a lot of talk on both sides but where else are you going to be able to get in massive amounts of servings of vegetables that maybe you don't even like eating um in a single glass i think uh for hydration for uh, hydration on a cellular level juicing is phenomenal now if you are trying to lose weight or you know you don't want to be drinking 32 ounces, a, a quart of, of plain orange juice. That's not going to do you any good. You're not going to feel satisfied afterwards. But if you do a low glycemic uh, green juice every morning, 
you'll you'll feel a difference. So things like uh, leafy greens, cucumbers, lemon, um, ginger, turmeric root, uh, maybe a, a green apple for just a little bit of sweetness, but still pretty tart. Um, have that every single day. You will feel a, a difference in energy. That's that's my opinion and the opinion that I have from from sharing that information with clients that I work with. It's also it's it's my experience and opinion too. You just can't beat it. Um, I know. They're always going on about the amount of sugar in fruit. It's natural fruit, and it's mm -hmm. not like drinking it all day long. No. So next question: shop bought super juices or homemade super juices? Oh, I'm if I can homemade home make anything, I'm all about homemade because I feel like you're going to get the freshest and the um, the best ingredients, the, the depending, even, even if you're at home and you have a centrifugal juicer, which is the one that can produce a little bit more heat, you're still going to get a, a lot of fresh juice if you drink it right away. If you have a masticating juicer, a slow juicer, then you can, you know, keep that in the fridge in a glass with a lid for up to 48 hours and still retrain, retain a lot of the nutrients. Um, whenever possible, I believe in, in home, uh, homemade, but you know, if, if you're not in that position, if you can find a juice bar, there's plenty of them around and get something uh, made for you freshly, that would be my second choice. And in the third choice, if you have no other options, then yeah, try to find an organic uh, green juice from, from the shop and, and you just do your best. Great, so number three, what salad dressing or not? I think dressings are key to keep people on track because, I mean, some sometimes it's really nice to eat just plain vegetables, but for the majority of people, I would say you need a dressing to keep things exciting. But that doesn't mean it has to be doused in oil. You can use things like salsa. You can throw together some tahini and some citrus. Uh, you can do garlic and vinegar and, and some mustard. The, the combinations can be thrown together in seconds and they can still be palatable to you and um, help you actually eat more veggies than, than you would if you were just eating them plain. Okay, oil or no oil? No oil, don't do it. <laughs> I, I'm definitely on the no oil camp because uh, oil is just, it's, it's not, it has no nutrients except for fat. And you're going to be consuming so many more calories than, than uh, you would if you were eating without the oil. There's plenty of flavorful ways to cook foods with vegetable broth or water fry or vinegar. Um, it's just not necessary. And it's not great for the arteries and the heart. Um, yeah, it's not necessary. That's what I thought. <laughs> no oil is good for you. We, I spoke to Dr. Esselstyn the other day. Mm -hmm. and spoke to Dr. Greg and both of them like, no, no oil, no, no oil. oil. Yep. What type of oil it is, don't do it. Not just Absolutely. Calories, but just for your health, don't mm -hmm. do it. Absolutely. So totally agree. We're all on the same page there. Mm -hmm. um, so the next one, this is a bit of a controversial one. Are potatoes good for you? Will they help you lose weight? Yes or no? Okay. Um, I don't think potatoes are bad. I think that uh, they're a wonderful staple to have in your diet because A, they're very inexpensive um, and something that you can keep in your pantry for quite some time. Uh, and they really provide grounding. And, you know, I'm all about cramming in as much fruits and vegetables as you can. But sometimes you need that little bit of heavier of the low calorie density foods to just to help you feel satisfied. And potatoes definitely do that. They they have a comforting effect, a grounding effect. And I know for myself, uh, times when I've lost the most weight, I, I've included potatoes in, in my diet. So I definitely don't think they are bad at all. As with any food, um, you know, you have to look at when you're eating. Am I eating when I'm hungry? Am I stopping when I'm satisfied? Or am I eating past fullness? Of course, if you're eating past fullness and it's potatoes or it's anything, you have to take a look at that um, if you are trying to you know, eat for weight loss or eat for overall health. But in my book, potatoes are great. Sweet potatoes, even better than regular potatoes. That's what I thought too. <laughs> the last one, 
Okay, this, this again is a controversial one because people don't like being told what to do, but we're here to try and provide some value and some information to people for health benefits. Mm -hmm. so, alcohol, yes or no? No, alcohol, no. Um, there's, you know, again, it's it's all up to you and, and what you, you deem to be important for your journey and where you're at. There's absolutely no judgment coming from me. Um, in the slightest. I've not ever been into alcohol, but I can tell you that it's a lot of excess calories. It's very taxing on many systems in your body. And over the long term, it does not have a good track record with overall health. So um, if you are drinking a lot of alcohol right now, you also have to realize that what do you want when you drink a lot of alcohol? It's not broccoli. You want to have something fried and, and junky. So those two things are tying in as well. You wanna take care of your liver, you wanna take care of, of your whole body. So as you can begin to reduce the alcohol, I believe you'll start to feel more awake and alert to your life. And, and um, you know, one good habit, it's like dominoes, just begets another good habit. So as you can, begin to reduce the alcohol and take note, take note of your energy levels, take note of how you're feeling, take note of that fog that can come, um, you know, when you're, when you're drinking a lot of alcohol. I say this uh, not as someone who drinks, but as, as someone who's very closely in contact with somebody who drinks a lot. And I, I can note the differences when they have reduced their alcohol and when they increase their alcohol in just the way that they function as well as their overall health from the outside. So from the inside, I can say uh, the benefits have to be even better. You'll be able to feel so much more uh, in your own body. <laughs> right. I mean, I don't drink anymore, but I used to drink. And mm -hmm. It does put a lot of weight on very quickly without noticing if you drink mm -hmm. regularly, especially if you drink Prosecco or coffee. <laughs> um, but also, it can make you age quicker. And oh, yeah. Dehydration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things I hated and even though I kept doing it, and I have no idea why I kept doing it, just because I was around that type of people probably mm -hmm. in that lifestyle. But I hated the day after and the hangover. Mm -hmm. so many people are affected by them. Mm -hmm. They just don't realize. And like you say, it's that brain fog. Once you're clear of the alcohol and the toxins and the sugar and you're putting more water into your body and more vegetables, you tend to feel a lot more energized and you feel like you're on top of the world and you're floating most of the time yeah but again with junk food it's the same thing if you're mm -hmm. planting and you go to junk food you feel like you've got a hangover absolutely it's because of the toxins mm -hmm. so the takeaway from this talk tonight is let's do more plants mm -hmm. absolutely i i completely agree and i think that you know um once you it, it's a matter of again just what how we started stepping outside of yourself and then just questioning what are these behaviors that i'm doing are they are they contributing to my overall health and my feeling of well-being or are they contributing to me being not my best you know uh what is it that i want for my life and does this help am i just going down this path with these people who i've always done and not questioned because that's the way it is. Is it time for me to step out and say, you know what, that's not actually what I want for my life. I want this and this, and then start taking the steps in the right direction um, with love and with curiosity, not with ever punishment, not with ever getting down on yourself. More yeah. plants for sure. Yeah, and the one thing that um, helps with health and the plant-based um, lifestyle mm -hmm. is commitment. Commitment to getting the best life possible for you and your family mm -hmm. and the best health possible for you and Absolutely. your family. So where can people find you then, Michelle, apart from YouTube, like I just glanced? But yeah, um, you can find me, basically look for Vegan Michelle, you can find me. Vegan Michelle on YouTube, veganmichelle.com for my website. Um, I've got a bunch of cookbooks available, uh, Amazon and on my website, and a ton of free recipes as well as just free information on the website as well as in the youtube channel um so yeah just look for vegan michelle and vegan underscore michelle on instagram forgot that one <laughs> i was gonna say you are on there because i see you're on there um but this is an example of plant-based health coaches working together to better the health and lifestyles of others so thank Absolutely. you for joining yeah. today and have a great week weekend and yes 
Mm. All right, sounds wonderful. Thank you so much. Just before I go, I just want to apologize to you and everybody at home who's been glared by my glasses. I'm as blind as about. <laughs> that's okay it really like you really can't i can't tell it's all good <laughs> that's great then i wouldn't like to um you know pause <laughs> thank you for being here today and have a great day thank you bye-bye